So essentially what we're looking at when we look at how identical twins and fraternal twins are, right? and, and I know this is probably a review for many of you, but identical twins are, like I said a minute ago, are clones of each other, and, and, uh, but they grow up, uh, essentially develop in um, the same environment, uh, the, the, the placental or the uterine environment, are, is the same for both of them. And they oftentimes will share uh, the placenta as well. Sometimes they don't, but oftentimes they do. On the other hand, fraternal twins are also have the um, also have the same uterine experience, uh, including the teratogens that attack. Uh, sometimes because of mom, uh, 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 because a mom might smoke, for example, um, they're exposed to the same things, except that they are um, not genetically the same. I mean, I'm having trouble with my spelling today. Um, are not genetically the same, and so in this case, in this case down here, you have identical twins fertilized by. Um, the a single uh, sperm and they divide and then share the um, uterine experience together like I said different placentas on the other hand in fraternal twins it is two separate fertilizations that actually occur they inhabit the same uterine but what you see in this diagram here is you have two very different placentas that feed each um, fetus and uh, Again, they they um, interact uh, and have uh, experiences very different because, of course, the genetic components are very different. Um, so the the bottom line is is that shared genes themselves, shared genes, translate into shared experiences. And for a lot of people, if you talk to them, particularly twins. Um, a lot of times people see them as a unit and oftentimes they um, function as a unit and the, the, the fascinating other fascinating part about that is that we see similarities uh, for them um, in a, a variety of emotional experiences I gotta get my eye in here so for example um, extroversion uh, extroversion versus um, introversion, you see a really high uh, concordance rate, which is kind of the term that we typically use um, uh, with uh, in twin studies, particularly. And a concordance rate is simply anything above 50% is pretty significant. 50% is just random. So extroversion, introversion, um, are way higher in the um, identical twins and this is not we're not talking about these are psychological entities here the psych aspects uh, they're not biological aspects in the sense of color of hair or height or whatever um, the other one which is and we'll talk about these when we talk about personality is something we refer to as neuroticism and neuroticism is more uh, a matter of, uh, it, it's not how neurotic someone is, but it's, it's the stability of mood and how stable they are, how easygoing they are, um, uh, or how volatile they are, stability of mood, which is another very, very high similarity rate between uh, twins themselves. And this is generally found uh, when they are, are living together, okay, um, together. And, and that's one of the keys. Now, the other aspect is having twins that are separated and what happens and various scenarios um, are, are mentioned in your book, like the identical twins of Jim Lewis and Jim Springer and how they were... Um, how they were separated and the things that they experienced down to naming dogs and etc but 
the 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 similarity the the similarities like we found uh, with twins that are living together still existed, which would suggest that we're not just talking um, we're not just talking biology here. We're talking about kind of wired in psychology that is part of the genetic code that makes these similarities stand out the way they do. And so um, the other aspect, which you can do the comparison points, is you, if you're in a family and you have multiple siblings, is uh, the difference between biological relatives and uh, adopted relatives. And again, the, the interesting thing is that um, you, you really can't uh, deny um, the differences between these and yet the similarities as well. Kids have very different experiences. I, I have talked to uh, kids of fa kids that are growing up in a family, and to hear them talk, you would think that they grew up in completely different families. Now, the thing that I think you have to um, really underline, and I'll go down here to try to highlight this, is is uh, the biggest aspect is something we refer to as interaction. An interaction between um, uh, her hereditary, heredity, oops, heredity, my T's are awful, and uh, social or, or environmental. And what that means is that if you have, uh, if, if we call heredity one and we call social one, we just give it a number just for the sake. Um, it isn't one plus one equals two. It's more like one plus one equals ten. That's what interaction effect does. Instead of it being additive, like we would think in this case, it's just adding the two together. It's actually multiplied in a sense. Now, obviously, one times one is not ten. But um, the, the idea here is what uh, you often find is that it's multiplicative. And, and that happens uh, when we're talking about heredity. We're talking about genetics versus uh, social and environmental influences that impact uh, the, the heredity. And back again. So, the, the things to keep in mind, and this is a kind of a key, this is very much of a key concept is the idea of interaction. Um, because it, it is the interaction between these component parts, heredity and environment, that turn on and turn off various aspects of the genetic code to produce what we actually see. And that's what's key to understanding um, this aspect.